Hello, good day everyone. Welcome to the Out of the Box Developer. Uh, today's session, we're going to talk about uh, open source, working with open source projects. So last week, or last session actually, we talked a little bit, we went through our chatbot conversation project and we shared some tools that was very useful for ourselves to work with open sources. And today we're going to continue this uh, discussion. We want to uh, hear more from the people that was watching us, uh, what they uh, what, what they think about the project and, and what is the biggest challenge for them, for you actually, to uh, to enter into, to, to collaborate and participate into some uh, open source projects. So tell me in the chat, uh, type here, what is your biggest challenge by starting with open source projects. And I, I also wish to congrats every developer that is a mother or every developer mother <laughs> for, for the Mother's Day that was yesterday, right? So yeah, congrats everyone. <laughs> I hope you had a great holiday uh, in your city. And I want to call my good friends here. So let me call our, our consultant uh, on AI specialist, Java champion. Uh, Mani Sarkar, hey Mani, how are you? Hey, you go. I'm good. Thank you for having me here. How are you doing? Long time no speak. Uh, yes, yes. We have been a lot busy, right, these days? And, it has uh, been, it has less, been a, it session, has been a yeah. busy two weeks, I must tell you. Yes. Yeah. Great. So thank great. you for making okay. the time to come and arrange this show and also invite me and, ha and have me on board. Great. Yeah. And we're going to. Uh, uh, we're going to follow up here on, on this session, right? <laughs> absolutely, Great. absolutely. And I also want to call our, our architect here and uh, now a Java specialist, but now a Python specialist as well, uh, Pedro Carva uh, Cavalero. Hey, Pedro, how are you? Hello, Yogo. Hello, Manny. Nice to be Hello. here. Well, yeah, uh, uh, happy, happy Mother's Day to everybody. So every mom, every mother is here. I think I, uh, I can say that the the our mothers are, well, my mother at least is one of the my, the most important person in my life. When I started here uh, as a, 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 a knowing computer, it was because of my mom. My mom said to me in 1992 or 1993. She said, "Oh." My oh son, I'm I'm buying a new a new thing. I'm buying a computer. I said, oh fantastic, mom. What is a computer? Well, what's a computer was an important question at that time. <laughs> I didn't know what is that. I said, oh, it's something you can write or work or something. Internet was not a thing at that time. I say, wow, I can say that changed my life, and I can yeah. say say my mom, mom. Thank you so much for for I'm being here today. <laughs> great, good, great story, Pedro. Yeah, uh, there are many people that influenced us a, a lot uh, to make uh, important decisions. And yeah, that was really something that changed your life, right? <laughs> changed my life. Yeah, thank, thanks for sharing, sharing that with us, Pedro, because uh, I mean, these are these are small things that go a long way, isn't it? Like. Exactly. Every of those small things, if they didn't happen in a sequence, you wouldn't be here with us on this show. And, you know, you would be somewhere else, probably, probably. You know, as good as this place, but not not, not where your life has brought you it's professionally and, and otherwise, right? You know, the friends you've made yeah. and, and the things you've done. So, yeah, thanks for sharing that with us, because this will also kindle the same spirit in everybody else who's watching this uh, show just now or later on and they will be able to recollect and remember the same event and the same things. Great. And yeah, yeah, and yeah now I, I also want to call our, our good friend here, mentor and uh, career specialist, and uh, Bruno Souza. Hey, Bruno, how are you? Hey, hey, hey everyone. Hello. Hey, how are you doing? Hello. Good to see you here. Hey, Mani, how are you doing? Hey, All Pedro. Good. Awesome story, right? So and I think that's a good moment, right, to... Remember the mothers, right? So that's great. It's awesome. <laughs> and you, they're watching us. So good to, to be here with you. 
uh, one more Monday to discuss the developer career. That's awesome. Cool. So let's let's get started here. Once again, I wish I want you guys. Uh, if you're watching us, uh, please uh, tell your name here on the comments uh, to interact with you. If you have any question, please place here. And what is your biggest challenge in open source projects? So tell us. Uh, it will be great to have uh, uh, not uh, four, four, four of us discussing. It is great to have you uh, discussing with us together. So bring your ideas and your questions. And well, yeah. since we're going to talk about open source projects, um, uh, and, and we talk a little bit about uh, our project, right, on, on, on chatbot conversation. So I want to uh, I want to bring a little bit of challenges that we we have with the project and and things uh that might be interesting to, to talk here i, I don't know can, who uh, money i think you have some uh some some thoughts uh, that we can start with this discussion yeah yeah thank you um so firstly uh i actually want to start saying um thank you to all all the three of you for making your time to come to this uh, session and also for taking on the the idea on board that we'd like to start showing more practical things to our audience and to all the all those who uh, look up to us for advice because the last 16 or 18 sessions that we've been doing since early february to 2022 a lot of them were a lot of them were answering questions and going through theory which are which is also important and which is the foundation of many things but uh, it's only recently we also started talking amongst ourselves saying we'd like to show our audience, our fellow viewers, uh, some practical things, things that really can churn more important and more related and relevant uh, discussions. And so thanks to three of you for going on board with this. So last time, I think it was a bank holiday for a lot of us across the world. And so many of our viewers were having a good time and didn't attend. So I was thinking um, we should share the link of the video to the last session to our audience so that in case they have missed it, they can have a quick view of it before we get started with this session. So I'm going to, uh, I have the link here before me and I'm going to just uh, share it with you guys in the, ch in the chat. And if you can propagate it to everybody else who, uh, who's going to be watching this show, that'll be really awesome because that way, we have uh, we have a viewers who can uh, take advantage of a previous session and on the back of that understand what we're talking about now because what i'm going to do now is probably going to be slightly the next level and and hopefully we'll all get into a discussion into some of those things that we would normally talk when we are working on an open source project so that's that's money uh, maybe maybe one thing that you can do is just kind of do like a uh two to five minutes overview of what was discussed the last 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 time that's so a great point kind of that's follow. a great point yeah. i'm going to share my screen if i'm and, able to i know the last yeah, time while, i had an issue while you're sharing the screen uh felipe here said a good challenge to find issues to contribute you with right so yes felipe it's always hard to you know it's, it's always complicated to find something to contribute you, you uh, with because we want to contribute to something really big sophisticated something amazing but a lot of times the project needs uh you know for each to get started right so you need to start with small things so my, my good suggestion philippe is to start with small start with small things that you can do maybe uh you go you start to participate in this project with money maybe you can 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 tell us a little bit how he started with with the tiny little things that he was doing before he actually got more involved in the project because i think that would be a good thing yeah, absolutely. Um, so, I mean, um, let, as as you as you were talking about um, about giving an overview, that'll basically mean walking through the project itself, right? So, if everybody can see the screen that I'm sharing, is that is that visible? Not yet. You go. Okay. It says it says yes. Sharing videos. So no, 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 no. Yeah, no, no. you are right. It was okay for you, but not 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 available for everyone yet. Now you have to share again. <laughs> oh, really? Okay. Let me try to share again. Yes. Is that visible now? Yes. Yes. Perfect. Okay. So this is 
well let me get a better view of this that's the the, the editing view so the, so so let's let me give a little bit of a background of the project and i did speak about this last time as well i was at a hackathon in the year 2021 um actually 20, 2019 uh, uh, at facebook and they were developing this they were actually they were they have invited everybody to come in and and do some work on their facebook messenger app like build some uh, cool stuff that you can build on top of it. And so as part of one of the things that I did was to make the chatbot interactive that would it would talk to an AI system in the background and the AI system would respond to user messages. So I took that idea further and I said, why not? Why is it does it have to be one to one conversation? Why not if lots of chatbots talk to each other and it doesn't have to be the Facebook uh, messenger app? It can just be the chatbots talking to each other through uh, an interface where we configure the interface to, to, to load up all the different chatbots and they talk to each other. And from that was born this idea. So the model that I used for one of the chatbots is the model I actually developed at the hackathon. So from that, I spun off this project and, and basically it started off with a very simple project, but it went, it, it exploded further. Initially, when I developed the project, it was just one server and a couple of chatbots, and they were connecting to, with each other using REST, REST API and REST endpoints. And one of the servers, one of the chatbots was written in Java using the ELISA code base, if everybody's familiar with ELISA. And the other one was uh, developed in Python using the Roberta, uh, the NLP model. Um, again, these were all very basic models. And at that time it was running, all of it was running on my local machine as an, as an app and they were communicating with each other. So you can already understand we, in some sense, you can say we were developing something like the microservices architecture, right? But I didn't have that in mind when I was working on it. So now came the time, how do I share this with the rest of the world? We all do this, right? Dockerize it, containerize it, put the whole application in a Docker container. And the moment you did that, and I did that, it was easy for me to deploy it and share it with the rest of the world. Because all I needed to do is share a, a, a shell script and it would go and download the docker container from docker hub and run it on your on your computer because everything that need needed for the docker container to run was available in that in that container well then uh, along the way came Hugo because that's when we also started talking about this uh, project on uh, out of the box developer and Hugo got interested and he actually helped if you see this readme page here a lot of the layout uh, simplification came from uh, the hard work from Hugo. So for example, in the beginning, if you see the history of the readme page, there used to be uh, lots of lines. We have reduced it to just three lines. Um, and anybody who has a Docker instance, like we did this last week or last session, Pedro actually ran the whole thing on his computer without having to do anything, but just following these three lines. So, and then we went, we developed it further. What we did is we then took each of the chatbots and we developed it using the different frameworks that we had. So you can see over here, we use the Halidin framework, the Quarkus, um, and the connecting world is just uh, plain old Java. And it doesn't stop you from doing that. In fact, you can take any other framework that you have Spring Boot or, or Micronaut, and you can emulate what we've done with the existing Halidin and Quarkus. So in short, that's what this project is about. Basically, run an app. They, it's all agnostic, language agnostic. They talk to each other with REST endpoint. You can put it in a container. And then we also did the next thing, which again, Hugo did great hard work in there, is being, we now can deploy this on one cloud instance called Oracle Cloud Interface Infrastructure. Sorry. And you can you have this, we have the code for it over here. Uh, again, the instructions are in the file. Uh, you can follow through it. And so all of that is now also available on this uh, GitHub repo, including screenshots and links to videos of our previous conversations. So if you're feeling lost, you can come here and watch these videos, go through these screenshots and, and documentation and find yourself uh, a way to develop this app. So that's kind of a, a long story of what I've been, what we have been doing. Um, and you can understand we've been working across various time zones. So that was also a, a challenge. So I think in the meanwhile, we'll have probably questions coming from, from different folks. Uh, if anybody can tell me if there's any questions, then, then I'll be happy to answer them and we all can take in turns.
I think we can just say hello to Maia that showed up there and say hello, yes. And so, uh, and ev everyone else that have, have questions and comments, uh, please feel free. But I have a question, uh, mm -hmm. you know, talking about uh, uh, trying to answer the question about which issues to solve. So, Hugo, when you start that, right, you know, uh, money starts saying that you, uh, you know, there's a lot, lots, there's all kinds of things that need to be done done to run this project. And now you, you may come down to three lines. So why do you decide to do this? What, what made you start contribution with, with that part? Oh, yeah. Uh, I think the, the important thing is to ask, what is the problem that uh, money has currently? So I can focus on what, what is the, the, the biggest concern of the project owner here. Uh, in this case, money is the owner and he created uh, the whole repository and have plenty of things already uh, uh, very well structured. And uh, at, at the first moment, I actually didn't know uh, what else money needs to, <laughs> to, to be done here. Maybe it, it's all, it, it seems to be already a done project, but uh, it, was, uh, it was in, 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 in money's roadmap. Uh, to actually make it as simple as possible to other people who start contributing. So, uh, because the purpose of this entire project is to uh, enable people to start with uh, AI and creating their own chatbots and and uh, and, uh, and, pro and 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 then and then uh, uh, continue with their growth and career. And for me, it was a very interesting project because uh, there was a lot of uh, tools that I actually use in, in my day-to-day, -day, in the work, and also some architectures that was uh, features that was interesting to explore here. So I think the really important part is to ask questions, or at least if you are unsure or you don't have the contact with the person, to, uh, to, with the owner to ask the question, uh, another very good tip that I have been using is to see what what kind of um, what kind of uh, of documentations that they have that they they need to be reviewed and uh, in the, and if you go through the getting started uh, uh, documentation for the project uh, if the, if you find something that uh, that didn't work in your environment might be something that was not documented yet. And and I, I I got a, a lot of these kind of projects in my uh, during my career, and I just started to to contribute with that, and and and, and yeah, the, the the community are very welcome for the 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 the, the problems or the uh, the fixes, the the PRs that help them get done something that uh, they don't have time to do. So I think that's the important part. Cool. Thanks, Hugo, for the for the the, the explanation on, on you know what was your first step and and how you and why you contributed in the way you contributed, right? And in fact, when you started, it was like a uh, like it was like a some uh, like a snowball effect, right? In a positive way, like you you started with a simple thing, then then you picked up another mm -hmm. thing, another thing. Before you know, you already started working on the Terraform uh, to deploy on Oracle Cloud infrastructure and you also wrote this where you know this first issue use websocket to communicate with chatbot you also wrote uh, the implementation for that and the, the pull request is right here um one of these days we're going to pick it up right uh if, if yes <laughs> well i don't think we the audience can see it here so what i'm going to do is i'm going to load it up in this page um, um so that's your pull so request your isn't pull it request. yeah and, and so, I think, so, yeah, go ahead, go ahead. Yeah, and so I think uh, you've come a long way with uh, being a, a contributor uh, and you spend your free time. And these are really technical, high level technical or deep down, deep dive technical topics to work on. And it's a very simple project anyways to start with, right? But you can see there are so many angles to it, right? So you have the cloud uh, in, in infrastructure angle, you've got the Terraform angle, you've got the Docker angle. And within that, you've got so many other things, right? You've got Java, Python, and then you have the communication protocols, right? You've got REST, you've got WebSocket. Um, and so the list is endless, right? And we haven't even scraped the surface of data science and machine learning angles here yet, because you see the models 
are the ones I was chasing was the was the reason I built this. I built this so I can test the models with each other, right? Is right. this chat Is model this better chat than model? this chat model? You know, you know, that was the whole purpose That's of it. Purpose. And we are doing that very simply and basic. We haven't even touched those. When we start exploring them, then we go, we fork into even further directions of learning, right? So, so there's so many layers to this thing. And you picked up an interesting one because sometimes solving these low hanging fruits and the, and the, what's the word here? Cross cutting concerns. You know, when you solve some of those, it helps so many layers one after the other. Like for example, the WebSocket feature, if you add them, then it makes it very easy for to connect to the chat bot even through a browser, isn't it? You don't really need to write a client then anymore. If you have a browser and you have you're exposing an H, a web socket, you can connect to the web socket and start communicating with it, right? And writing messages, and it'll write write back responses. So this is what I really value about picking up the right lower hanging fruits. Mm -hmm. So that was really that was really good. Uh, sorry, go on, Pedro. You wanted to you wanted to add in something. Yeah, I want to add a, a comment to, because many times people ask me, "Oh, uh, I want to I want to learn some new technology," and uh, uh, well, I I just see some videos or I just do some uh, just do some exercises. And it doesn't feel like I'm learning this stuff. Yeah. So uh, I could say uh, we could we could say oh if you were going to this kind uh, to this kind of project, you would train all this stuff and learn much more, right? Yeah. And it'll also be fun. Yeah. So I I I use this word end to end a lot. I think Bruno knows this from all the sessions I've done with him. I like this, the end-to-end -end flow and the cross-cutting concerns. I use those terminologies a lot. And for me, for from both the technological and the learning perspective, a project like this, I didn't even know it would end up like that. That wasn't even my goal. You see, my goal was a simple goal to solve a very simple problem, right? Make a, make a, a, a user talk to a model, right, through an interface. And then it became slightly more sophisticated. Make the models talk to each other through an interface. I wasn't even aiming to make it an end-to-end cross-cutting concern project, right? I wasn't even aiming to make it like what it has become now. But as we kept building on it, and as I spoke to developers like Hugo, and Hugo has been one of the biggest contributors, but there have been others who also uh, contributed in different ways, I started getting new ideas, right? Why, why does it have to be language dependent? It can be language agnostic. So you use REST. Okay, then how do you port it to somebody? Okay, you port it through Docker containers. That's fine. Now it works on your local machine. But what if I want to run on the cloud? Okay, you still use the same Docker container, but then you write a Terraform layer around it, right? And, and once you have some of these basic bells and whistles in place, now we have created an interface which is quite much, not as sophisticated as a hub and spoke architecture, like the hexagonal architecture. But we can think of it as, if somebody has to write a new chatbot, it's like a it's like a hub and spoke architecture, right? You build it separately, you just configure it, you connect it, and it, they're decoupled, right? They're not dependent on each other. That chatbot could be now written in Ruby. And the central server wouldn't know, and none of the chatbots would know whether it's written in Ruby or not. It would just send the same commands and get the responses, right? As long as you've written the chatbot in that protocol, using that protocol. And so it's now becoming, and in fact, this is what I was planning to do, is maybe if you have the time to do it, we could quickly draw a diagram of the architecture of what is the state of play at the moment. And like, like you know, the bird's eye view of where things are. And we can close, cl quickly map cloud, local machine inf interface, Docker container, languages, models. Uh, and, and we are forming, we're starting to form a picture that we never started off with, but it automatically has been formed. And a project like this, it doesn't have to be this specific project, but a project like this, if it covers these areas and angles, then it's fun to learn and fun to use it to learn new things. Like um, uh, Yuga and I learned so much about Terraform and Docker and shell scripting and working collaboratively as well, right? Because Yugo's trying different things. Some things don't work on his sound follow uh, data center and some things work on my London data center. And how do we make it work so it works for both of us? We've solved that problem, which means 
many of the other users who would come later on, if they have those data center problems, they can look at how we've solved it for our data centers, right? So things like that. And then the code is very um, agnostic as well because you can just change a whole bunch of things and get it to work on, in theory, on GCP or AWS or another third party cloud provider. And you don't have to change any line of code inside the application. And many, wow. any people could help on that? Like any people, if any people is listening to us here today and wanna help us, uh, what what they can do? They need to, to, to go to you or they can just go to GitHub and find it? Yeah, I mean, the simplest thing is, I think I've shared the link to the project. I'm gonna share it again. The simplest thing to do is, I'm gonna share the link again, go to the, uh, um, re, the the landing page of the project, which is which is what you see here on the screen. Have a read of the readme. Watch the videos. There's quite a few of them. But even before you watch the videos, you can do these first three lines, which everybody does. Clone the repository. Go into the repository folder. Make sure you have Docker contain Docker installed, and then just run that that one liner command on your on your command line from in, from inside that folder and see the see the application download and run right to just get a feel of what the project is about and watch it do things right the things it will do are simply what you will see in this, these videos here and and down below in the screenshot you have these messages that you will see and those are the exact same messages or more or less similar messages you will see on your screen so, so that's the first thing to do. Once you get a, a hang of it and you find it's fun, fun. Um, then you can start looking at the issues page. There's, there's a whole number and nobody needs to talk to anybody actually here. It's very self-explanatory because Hugo has really helped me clean up the readme. And now with these, Hugo and I did a, a bunch of sessions as well before we uh, even did started the out of the box developer. We, we did a session with EL's uh, platform, AI for Enterprise. And so we ran this whole thing on that session. So if people watch those, and and also we had another out of the box developer session the last time, and and this one, it's more than enough answering all the questions or many questions to just get started, right? Then look, and the source code is very simple to understand. If the last time when we were going through it, in fact, it's in our video. You could see there's only one line implementation or a few lines implementation to create this protocol that will uh, uh, that will uh, help communicate between the the chatbots. So to answer your your question is, um, they don't need to ask anybody anything. They can come to the landing page, watch the videos, run the app, and get started by looking at the issues page. So I think interesting issues to solve. Sorry, go on, Hugo. Yes, uh, sorry, man. So I, I just want to add that Felipe just ans uh, asked about, oh, it's difficult to find an issue. Here's some issues that you can find here to contribute. And uh, here are some, uh, some issues regarding to the, uh, to the project code itself. But there's uh, some other things that is improved code quality or also the documentation. If you see that there's something on our documentation that could be better uh, yep. presented by four other users or four other contributors. They're always uh, welcome. So yeah, I, I invite you to, to come here if you want something uh, to, uh, to start contributing. But of course, uh, if you have already some project that you, uh, you would like to, uh, to work with, that is something yeah, interesting for you, like uh, not 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 long time ago, I, I contributed in the uh, in the Quarkus project. I went through their getting started and I found some issue in, in, in their getting started, and and I updated the documentation for them. And that was so uh, interesting that in the uh, after that, in the end of the year, no, I think it was it, it was very recent this year yet. Uh, Red Hat sent a, a T-shirt for me because I I did a contribution on that on, on that period for them. So. And I was so happy with that T-shirt. Oh man, <laughs> do I deserve it? <laughs> I, I felt I felt so good with that, and 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 they did a good good job with that. They they motivate us to contribute more and more. Uh, yeah. That are such kind of uh, interesting actions they they do. 
Yeah. Well, the the good thing at the out of the box developer, we may not be able to at the moment give you a T-shirt or a sticker, but we can definitely bring you on this show if you contribute to a project like this or any other project and you want to talk about it. You can become a guest. We are always looking for for guests of all walks of life who who do work in the software field to come and show us their work. And also, if you're contributing to this project, then it becomes even more interesting for us to bring you on and to show how you've contributed to a certain aspect of the project. Because every aspect of this project, you can find it in somewhere in some other project you're working on or a or, or project you're working on in your workplace. And to emulate that and show the other viewers on how to do something like that, it's definitely going to be educate, educational for everyone. For oh, sure. Let me ask you something uh, about open source. As well. oh, oh, I always uh, oh, uh, hear some kind of some, this kind of questions like, okay, a, a, every every different pro open source project has different process. So uh, this project we can like just go to issues, but in other projects may I may do something else or like I I, I see I see for example people always trying to look the open source project that they know like oh I, a different framework or something uh oh, oh, it, it would be uh, why they are so difficult to get yeah so you got to understand um and maybe you go and bruno and yourself will have different views on this but my personal experience has been that um there's a few categories there's uh, hobbyists who come up with an open source project and they don't know they will get a lot of attention or little attention and they may not know how to manage all of that because you know their their forte is to write code and and maybe bring it in the open source but then there's the other category of uh, developers who are organized who know what they're expecting and who they know that once they develop and del make a so software open like that they will get a whole lot of people so they create something like a protocol, like a system of flow, that when the people come into that project and want to contribute to it, and they may even have an idea of what are the different types of developers might be interested in their project. And then you have a third one, which is sometimes run by commercial outfits, profit organizations. So they might have an yet another protocol, which may be in between, or maybe like the second example I was talking about. Uh, but some more layers on top of it. So the degree of difficulty increases when the expectation of the person who brings the project in the open has has to follow rules and re regulations, right? So uh, those, the second type of developer might be a bit more like a free and open-minded developer, but yet wants to have things organized. The first type of developer might be free and open-minded, but then may not have thought about Oh, I need. I will be attracting a lot of developers. I need to have a protocol. I need to have a system in place. These three things can all create three different types of difficulties. If you can already see what I'm getting at, if you're not organized and you don't know what you, when I'm saying when I'm saying if you're not organized, doesn't mean you're disorganized. It's just you're not prepared for meeting your audience. Then you won't have a protocol. And then to get to starting with a project will be a hit or a miss, right? With some people, you might just hit it off and the project just goes on, even if they don't have a protocol. With some other people, if they don't have a protocol, you can't hit it off, right? The second rule, uh, second type of developers would be they have a protocol, but then they have a, such a protocol. It could be anywhere between an easy protocol to a not an easy protocol, right? Same goes with the third one, where it might be less on the easy, less on the easy side, but more on the harder side, right? Because they want to be more strict with how they do things. All of these three different categories create three different types of difficulty on getting into it, right? So, but amongst them, like at least in the middle type developers, and maybe even the third type developers, there are amongst them also people who make things easier and are welcoming, right? Like mostly it is like how welcoming you are to your audience when they first start talking to you by either raising an issue or creating a pull request or asking a question. If you're not friendly, if you're not social, if you're not communicative with them, if you're not helpful with them, like if, if I didn't give Hugo any incentive on, you know, starting and creating the README and didn't give him any hints and didn't show him the different things. And of course he contributed and appreciated his contributions. 
then it wouldn't be a much of an incentive for him. He would find it really hard every, to do, do every push, every commit. And then he would just give up and say, oh, you know, I've got better things to do. So that's kind of my experience so far. So I don't know if that answers your question, but you could find flavors of this all across the, the internet with different types of projects. Again, everybody's mileage varies. Uh, Hugo and Bruno and Pedro might have different experiences. I know Bruno has got a lot of open source experience. So maybe some of the things I said resonates with, with you, Bruno. And maybe you want to add to that. And after that, Pedro and Hugo, you might want to follow on as well. Bruno, I think you're on mute. Um, mute. Yeah, because a lot of times it depends on the project, right? You know, some projects are actively looking for people to participate. Uh, some projects uh, are actually run by companies, for example, and they're not really um, active. But I think that the projects that are more visible, they're more active, that uh, are projects where the developers take the effort to really uh, help newcomers, right? Because... That is, you know, I think I think that's the same thing if, if you're doing a project in your company, right? If a new person, you just hire a new person to work with you and, you know, that person comes in and, and you're like, you don't help it out. You don't point to the right things. You don't show where the person can start. You don't, you don't help them understand the code. Then, you know, they might take a long time to be effective, right? To actually yeah. start helping you or, or maybe they, they never do, right? And, yeah. and you know, they just they might just be on, on the sides and even decide to leave the company. And I think that on an open source project, you know, the way the way I like to call those things, right? For me, um, an open source developer is a volunteer developer, right? That does not mean it doesn't receive to, to, to work on it, right? So many people are working from a company that wants to invest in open source, so they're being paid to work on an open source project, right? But uh, uh, they're volunteers in the terms that they do what they want, right? You know, they do the things that they want to do uh, instead of things that the project owner tells them to do, right? And so because of that, every time someone joins a project, it's your job as a project owner to really bring them in and help them understand and participate on this. Because if you don't do it, you know, they're going to look for another project. They're going to do uh, something else. And I think we are all at some point in, in different projects, different things that we do, uh, we, we're, we all had the experience of, you know, for example, uh, wanting someone to help us out organize something or wanting us to maybe organize a user group, organize the party of our kids or, or you know, maybe the, the, the end of the year part of the company. I mean, we want people to help us out, right? And because we centralize everything, we're doing everything. We don't tell people what 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 we what they can help us with. Then there's no help comes right, and we suck. And like, oh no, I'm doing all this alone. There's no one helping me. Right? We get mad of that, but we forgot that to get help, we need to help. Yeah, absolutely. It's a two way street, and social coding is what's going to help, and not like the lone wolf coding which used to happen before social coding became a norm. Right. Yeah. Do you want to add anything to that, Hugo, Bro, Pedro? Yeah. Go on. I, um, one, one quick add here is uh, an open source project or open source community have uh, a common practice to, uh, to, uh, to create the contribution markdown that they, they, they help us to uh, to tell us how to contribute in that project. So that is a very good documentation. Usually there are uh, very good documentation that help you helps you uh, to get started into the project, especially those big projects uh, like Quarkus that I, I, I just mentioned, but also Microsoft, uh, their repository also have this contribution markdown. And sometimes uh, they they are very uh, very rigid. If you don't follow the contribution markdown, uh, they won't accept your your PR your contribution. They 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 want to follow that pattern that standard, so uh, so they can keep the project as clean as possible or as uh, as organized as possible. And and yeah, it's always a good idea to take a look on the contribution markdown. Um, yeah. I think that's uh, one quick thing that might be interesting for uh, people that is starting. Pedro, you wanted to say something uh, previously? 
Uh, I would I would uh, ask a, another question. It would be uh, following what Bruno said. Uh, uh, that co uh, when you are contributing to open source, it is a volunteer job. So, uh, and of course, uh, we know that this this uh, uh, very important thing we can do to our careers. But I would like to 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 hear from Bruno what what he can say about it as to people that says, "Oh, I'm not doing that because I'm not being paid by that for for doing for doing that." Yeah, I think I think that in 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 all volunteer activities, right? Uh, I think there is this tension of you know I need to be paid or you know uh, I'm, I'm I'm not being paid. I think open source is a good example of that. I see lots of people that tell me, you know, so why why would anyone contribute to open source, right? You know, why would you work? That's that's the expression, right? Why would you work for free for so and so, right? And and the reality is that you know you that's that's why I think it's a volunteer work, right? Because you're not actually working for free for them, right? You're working for you, right? You know, you're doing the things that are important for you. You're doing the things that that you want to do. You think you're doing the things that uh, that you care about because you want to learn, because you want to grow, because you want to meet people, because you want to add something to your to your resume, because you want to get a new job, right? Because you want to show up in the market, because you want to. You know, there's so many reasons why people do things. And uh, considering that the only reason why people do things is because they, get, they are being paid, that's, um, I think that's an a, a oversimplification. Actually, the, the best things that people do, they do because they're not being paid, right? You know, I saw, I actually just saw today um, this meme that had this, this, uh, um, in one side, it was this guy carrying a box, right? You know, saying like, you know, carrying a heavy weight at your job, right? And they're like, you're like, oh, this is so heavy. Why people need this? You know, I'm, my, my, my back hurts. And, and the other side had carrying uh, heavy weights at the gym, right? So you're like very heavy weights. You're like all happy and, and everything. You know, you, you actually, you're, so in one side, you're receiving money to carry a heavy weight. The other side, you're actually paying money to carry a heavy weight and you like it, right? So I think that the same thing, you know, when, when you're doing open source, you have the freedom to do what you want. That's why I call a volunteer work, right? So so instead of you, while, while you're at work, you might be coding on, on a very, uh, uh, you know, maybe boring application that doesn't make a big impact, maybe not using amazing technology, but then at open source, you're actually working on the coolest thing you can find, right? Doing the most interesting thing with amazing people, right? So you might be looking for that, right? You might be looking that because because you you you're, you know it's exciting, right? So um, I think that now, but one one thing to your question, uh, Peter, I think is very important is that people that participate in those activities, right? Participate in open source, participate in user groups, uh, and volunteer events, people that do all those things, without considering why they want to do it or why, what value they're bringing in or what value it's, that thing is bringing to them, those people will start and they'll give up, right? Because when, when you don't see the value, you're just going to stop because it's just a waste of time, right? But people that actually know, know that they're looking for value and know what kind of value they're looking for, those people continue and do more, right? Because they're going to get lots of results. Yeah, I think plus one, uh, spot on on that, because um, I think you've said this, but I want to add it and say it in a different angle as well. When we are working on open source projects, we are actually developing ourselves. And we need to be thankful to all those people who are involved, who are indirectly and directly helping you grow and develop. Because just like Hugo was saying, uh, and I think Bruno said earlier as well, when you start working on an open source project, you start interacting with all the amazing people who are behind that project, right? I mean, saying that we, in an ideal situation, we're always, in almost all cases, when you're working on an open source project, we are working with amazing people because a project wouldn't be an open source project if it was not because amazing people wanted to make it open source, right? Otherwise, it would stay like a private closed source project. Secondly, when they are open source project, they already indirectly sign an unspoken contract with you that if you come to help me, we will help you. We will help you help us, right? Which means they are already signing the unspoken contract of mentoring you whether you want it or not, 
right? Of course, if you don't want it, then you won't be part of the project. But once you start working, then you feel the mentoring, you will start liking it. And that's when all the altruistic nature comes in, where you spend all the sleepless nights, which I've done for many projects, trying to make something work. And then they guide you through saying, okay, you made it work, but this is the protocol. Can you follow it? And then you also then touch so many areas of software development process, including mostly importantly is communication. Then none of this would happen at a workplace actually, you know, because at a workplace, a lot of these things means they want something done, right? They, they may or may not sometimes have you mentored for it. They would expect it to work. You know, you should know how to do it. That's why you are here. Whereas in an open source project, no, you don't know how to do it, right? No, it's not. You should. He'll teach you how to do it. And then once you get better, you teach other people how to do it. And then you make it better. So the whole paradigm, the whole model is quite different in a workplace. That's why that gym analogy is very interesting, right? I mean, people would if they understand the value of this. They would actually pay to be an open source project because all these years of software development that I've done, I've learned most from open source contributions and my open source contributions have led me to meet really amazing people and really amazing groups where I would then do workshops with them. I've met Bruno several occasions, so many, so many of those sessions. And like Bruno, I've met lots of other amazing people as well. You don't build those connections. If you don't build good connections, you can't learn from good developers because when you meet great people like Bruno and, and the other seasoned developers, they'll tell you, why don't you do this? Why don't you read this book? And they won't tell you directly. They'll talk about something and say, oh, these are the great books to read or these are the this is a great blog post to read. It saves you so much time of doing all the hunting to find out, oh, what should I read? What should I do? What should I write? What is the coolest stuff? No, they already know it, right? They'll just pass it on to you. So that's the great benefit of being part of an open source project. And if people are not noticing the value, that's when all these other questions come in. Mm -hmm. uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but this is for me. I've never questioned open source. Because the moment I touched it, I saw the value. But that's a very interesting thing yeah. that you said there, Money, because, you know, you said that when people see the value they would pay to be on open source, that's exactly what I tell companies, right? When companies tell me, but Bruno, are we going to use this thing that's free, right? You know, or, uh, uh, and, and I said, look, uh, uh, you know, if you really notice the value of open source, you actually pay for it, right? Because... Yeah. Now, if you get any software that you buy from anyone, what's the chance that that software is going to come with source code that you can modify, that you can change, that you can that you can use, you can redistribute? Like most most times, you have to pay extra and a lot of money to have access to the source code, right? So actually, you know, when when people realize the value of open source, it's a huge huge value. You're totally right, Manny. Yeah. I mean, so many companies and so many value-added services are now built around open source, right? I mean, the list just goes on. Red Hat is the greatest example, I'll say. And it's not like an example of five years and 10 years. How old is Red Hat? They've been doing this since inception, right? If I'm not mistaken. you, Bruno, you must know this better than yeah. me. Yeah Red, yeah, Red Hat started as an open source company from the beginning, right? And I think right. it's the greatest open source yeah, company. And they ever. never looked back. And they, they probably started with a small group of people, isn't it? Today, how many people work for Red Hat? Yeah, so now actually uh, uh, we can see the value of open source because IBM bought Red Hat, right? Yeah. So I don't remember how much IBM paid for Red Hat, but that is the value of open source right there, right? Yeah. A few billion dollars. <laughs> I don't think it's a few billion dollars. I think it's a double digit billion dollars. <laughs> if you no, I mean, for it. Red Hat, I'm not, I don't remember how much IBM bought, bought Red Hat for. So. Right. Okay, anyways, but that's that's beside the point of the the market valuation for it. Uh, mm -hmm. the the intangible value is what you get from being part of such projects. Sure. Right? Because they, no one can put a price. And what I was want to want also was going to say is when you involve yourself in such projects, things you get from it, no one can take it away from you. I mean, if you want to release it off you, you cannot. It becomes part of you, right? Of your of your being. So that's the, that's the that's the value that's the meaning of the value that it's it's an it's intangible and it's growing and it stays with you. Yeah. So interesting thing. So just kind of put it really quick here. So Max saying hello. Hey Max, how are you doing? And Max is on collab time at Soja right now, right? So uh, interesting enough that's that's you know uh, uh, for example, Soja runs this this 
collab time where you can sit down and you can work on things. You can, you know, ask questions to each other. And, and I think that developers have been for many, many years, right. Have been learning from each other. Right. And I think that uh, uh, one, one thing that I say a lot about, about software development, because software development is more art than engineering, right? So it's, there is engineering in software development uh, at, as is engineering in any kind of art, right? But, you know, but software development is a creative process. It has a, a big, big part of art in it. And what happens is that when, when, when you have a, a something like this, the best way for you to learn it is by doing with others, right? Yep. And so open source is our, uh, uh, you know, is, is the way for us to collaborate, is the way for us to work together so we can really learn um, about technology, right? So, yeah, and I think yeah. that's great that w- what Max is doing, right? Um, and, you know, actually we have, a, we have a good friend and a Java champion here watching us. So that's Baslur Haman. Hey, Baslur. Mm-hmm. Hello. How are you doing, man? If yeah. I'm not mistaken, Baslur is in Canada, right? So, hey, Baslur. Uh, how are you doing? Unless he's traveling, right? So good to have you here. Basler should come one day with us here, right? And have a conversation because uh, uh, that would be great. All right. We are getting, we are growing more and more privileged, I would say, with more and more <laughs> of the Java champions joining us. Um, yes. Just the last thing that you said, if I have to sum it up in one line, open source is the, is the, is the way of learning by doing. Mm-hmm. Uh, or you can say open source is the means to learning by doing, isn't it? That's right. That's that's yeah. right. I think so, I think that's mm-hmm. that's uh, that's actually uh, you know it's a way for us developers, right, to do things together, uh, unhindered by our companies, unhindered by our work contracts, unhindered by uh, you know any kind of licensing, you know, because the license allows us to go and share, right. There was one interesting thing, money. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm not sure how it was uh, in in England, right? But when I started software development uh, here in Brazil, and you know, uh, in the past, you know, you had things like applications in Visual Basic or in Clipper, right? So they're all interpreted languages, and uh, um, actually, Clipper, I think, was 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 compiled, right? But you know, yeah, we had Clipper all was compiled. Yeah, DBS DBS four was interpreted. You didn't mention DBS four. Fox right. Pro so, was interpreted. Fox, Fox, Pro, yeah, Fox Pro was interpreted. So you had all this this software that was interpreted, and then and and so so basically you distribute the software with the source code, right? And you know we would get that source code and play around it and change things and 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 work and improve things on it, but it was just not allowed, right? But but we just didn't care or we just didn't know. I don't know what it, what it was, right? We didn't know that it was it was not not allowed. We didn't care it was not allowed. I don't know, but actually that was the way that we learned it, right? By by playing around with code from other people, right? So then when open source came along, because we have to remember that open source, the open source definition. I mean, free software was defined earlier, right? But the open source definition just came in 1998, right? So actually three years after Java, right? And so even Java is a good example because Java when Java came out. It was not open source, right? Java was, was uh, um, released under a, 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 a Sun license that was not open source. You had the whole source code available. You could do anything you wanted with Java. The source code was there. You just did not have the permissions to do everything, anything, everything you wanted, right? You know, you had you couldn't you couldn't distribute your changes back, right? You you, you could play around with it, but you did you're not allowed to distribute the changes, right? And so, uh, um, so all of those things, right? So, you know, we had this idea that once we have the source code, we can play around with it. But then the licensing prevent us from doing it. And the open source is the other way around, right? Open source makes the licensing in a way that we know that we can play with it. We know that we can share with others, right? We, we don't have to worry about the license. Yeah. We know that we can share. And I think this is such an amazing thing because, you know, I have a piece of code that I can work with and I know I can send that to you money, right? Mm-hmm. And I know that if you do something with it, you can share with me what you did and we both of us can work together to improve, right? So this yeah. is such an amazing opportunity for all of us. And I, I, I tell developers that 
you know, I don't care what companies tell about open source. I don't care what startups are. Oh, yes, we should open source. You know, I, I understand that those discussion. Right. So there's times that you should open source times. You don't. You should not. I do understand that. But that's for business discussion. Right. It's a business discussion. But for developers, there's nothing better than open source. Right. Yeah. So for totally developers, agree. you should be participating in open source. Doesn't matter which project. Right. You should be doing this because for us, there's nothing better in, in the market. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And in fact, Hugo and I wouldn't be contributing on this project if it wasn't open source and if the tools, the basic tools that we needed, which we covered in our previous session to contribute uh, to work with each other, like, you know, GitHub, uh, VS Code or or, or um, Eclipse or NetBeans or IntelliJ. Uh, if you didn't have those, um, shell scripting, uh, you know, and and and, and and tools even like maybe in the past we didn't have so much of the video conferencing tools to to go online and screen share but with that that has open source development has become even more powerful right because now i can and I, this is what yugo and i did we shared screens to say yugo said this is not working for me oh did you put that slash there because i see the slash is missing oh yes okay puts the slash everything starts working fine so things like that really help like the basic tools really help and the most important is the, the, the source code uh, shareability right if github repositories have made that so much possible we all work on the same source code and you know we can replicate our changes contribute our changes without breaking each other's work and then it all gets like uh, interleaved into into the work and then multiple people can work on it it's not just two people across various time zones so yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Awesome, that's awesome. So Bruno, we yeah. have a little bit of time, but I was thinking, and 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 the last time Pedro did it, and I was thinking this time you should help us do it. Try to clone the repository and run the shell scripts and see what happens. If it fails, it's okay. We can you can use this <laughs> as a homework to fix it. So it's just okay, if so you go to the readme of the of the of the repository, which uh, I think you can see on my screen. It's this. Oh, yeah. So let me, let me share the screen again. So, yeah. so actually, Basil has some questions here, right? Yeah. So yeah. while Basil is asking his questions, I suggest you clone the repository and go into the uh, project directory and run that shell script and let me know what happens. It's all command line stuff. No, no IDE cloning and all that. Okay. So, so let, yeah. Let me, let me get the. Let me get the. Yeah, and and maybe Pedro or Hugo, you can read out Basil's questions to us, and then we can we can mm -hmm. continue with the chat while Bruno is is busy trying to prove to us that the software is portable and it runs sure. on any computer. <laughs> Hugo, That's can good. you post that? Yeah, yeah, maybe not, right? Open source yeah. truly. The Basil said, "Open source truly presents a wonderful platform for learning and expanding your network." Just last year, I began contributing to a Jakarta E project which provide me with an invaluable entry into the Jakarta E community. It's been an incredible experience. I even had the privilege of being featured as a committer in one of the Eclipse's newsletter. Fantastic, Basler. Am amazing, amazing. I'm seeing uh, many discussions about the Jakarta E uh, projects in, in, in so Java. So if you're thinking that this is so uh, so uh, 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 so far away from you, or far away from what you can do. Man, uh, in, in, at so shell Java is a community, one of the biggest community uh, uh, Java community here in Brazil, and it is and there do, do, you can find all the many guys that work on Java e and Java e project like. Uh, other Ma Max Median who was here, uh, Otavio Santana, Gabriel. Gabriel, many people there, and I see sometimes some people say, "Oh, I, I don't know what what to contribute," and I see many small contributions like in the documentations or, or all the small stuff, and starting and growing uh, in this community. So uh, of course, Basel is a a Java champion and can and has lots to contribute but everyone can get there that's what I'm, that's this is important to see 
right? In this this project, you can imagine oh, how many Java Java champions there <laughs> there are in in Jakarta E project. I can't imagine. I can't. Well, count. that's a haven for people to go and learn from because you know once you see how the strong developers of our industry are uh, collaborating and developing something, just, which is what I, how I learned from is to watch how everybody else has been doing. I used to watch the newsletters and the discussion forums and only later on I would jump in. But in that meantime, you get to see how all the strong developers are contributing and that's a great learning experience. You know, just reading the newspapers is a contribution because you build up that knowledge base to eventually step in and say certain things that can help progress the project further and there's always help needed like how uh, Hugo was mentioning earlier the readme and and he also mentioned the contributions.md which we don't have for our project which kind of uh, gave me an idea <laughs> I think it's I have it I have it for another project and I think mm -hmm. I can bring that into this project and we can adapt it to this project um, and I think there's there's a long way to go for that contribution.md we also don't have uh, um, technology lists, like a list of technologies that we've used and, and, and future potential technologies we can use to further this project. And I think that would bring in a lot of interest as well from people who want to learn more or, or even want to get experience with the existing technologies that we have used. Really cool. And and this this story, this example from Basler, I think it's the best one to to and to see those invaluable uh, things that you get on open source. So if you think just on, on, on money, uh that is uh that is things that is that probably much more than uh, any money that you could earn here. Network, learning, uh your knowledge. Uh, getting uh, hanged together with people that that likes to use the same tools that you like and and grow with them. Uh, I, I'm I'm here. Uh, I'm I'm stopped when, and my 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 mind blown when when Bruno uh, compared a gym with the open source and and yeah, it's it's exactly there's a place there's an environment uh, for free uh, accessible for everyone. Uh, that you can actually use to improve your knowledge, to to gather your your uh, to grow uh, in your career, to be to use your the professional tools. Then, like, oh, really? We should be paying. <laughs> no. Yeah, when people not, start not, not recognizing the value. <laughs> yes, yeah. exactly. People start taking. Then they will not go to courses. Uh, I wouldn't want to compare it with university. But they wouldn't want to go to these diploma courses and other courses they do or online courses they do, which don't bring you and give you the practical experience that can only be only be um, accrued and earned through through like ex uh, applying yourself to such things over a long period of time. So it's not like a six months course. It's like a long period of time consistently in different ways that a course could never cover. So I think we could um, support and Bruno by helping him screen share and walking him through any of the steps that's holding him back. So one, so one, thing, one thing I want to do here really quick, uh, mm -hmm. let me share. Why don't you share your screen and I'll stop sharing. Uh, so so you, you this, is how, this is how we can develop open source and solve each other's problems, right? Screen you share need, you and... To, you, don't need, you don't need to stop sharing, that's okay. But the one thing I want to say because you mentioned about having Java champions and Basel mentioned about Jakarta EE, right? And so this, these are the top contributors of uh, Jakarta EE in Q1 of this, this year, right? Wow. And so, you know, Otavio shows up number one, right? So by the way, if you're watching us from anywhere for Europe, I'm going to be traveling for Tavio. It starts next month in all kinds of Europe, but looks like he's here number 11, right? So that's yeah, Max. Max. Ellen. Max, wow. Max, Max that was here. Yeah, Max was here with us. You know, he was already joined us here before, and he's also was just here a few minutes ago talking to us, right? So Max is right there um, in the uh, yeah. uh, in, in Jakarta, e, right? So that's so that's yeah. great. Just just like and you Max know. is running all the collab times in so at in so Java every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. So 
You, you, you can find him there. Very easily. dedicated person. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and yeah. I'm just thinking we did a mistake in this session. I should have invited Max to tell, uh, to share with us here how was the experience to get uh, into into the eleventh year, uh, <laughs> most uh, yeah, most the uh, biggest committer in, in Jakarta. E. So congrats, Max. Uh, you are an inspiration here for everyone. Uh, he's, he's, open source. he's still he's still here, right? So yeah, so you, you can actually send the link to him, and he can join. Oh us yeah, if you, that's true. Because <laughs> yeah, you know, he, he's still he's still replying to us right there, right? Uh, so so Baslur, uh, I'm not I'm not coming to JCon. No, I'm not. Uh, unfortunately, uh, I could not get a speaker a speaking slot there. But I'm going to speak in J Spring. Uh, and so because Jay Spring happens right in the middle of JCon, right? So, you know, JCon, I think, is, is 2021, 22 or something like this, or 21, 22, 23 or something like this, and Jay Spring is 21. So I'll be closed by uh, Baslur, but I'm not going to be there. But if you're going to be in JCon, Baslur, uh, maybe you want to extend your, your trip a little bit and come with me to, um, to Munich, Right, I'm gonna do a presentation in Munich on the Saturday, right after JCon. So you're gonna be close by. So I'm, I'm, I'll be happy to have you there, and you can, you can be a speaker there with me. Uh, are there any plans to have a transit via London? Uh, any chance, uh, Bruno? Is that part of your itinerary, or you're not London, revealing the secret? So I'm gonna, I'm gonna. It looks like the closest to London that I'm gonna be is gonna be uh, Birmingham. How, how do I say the name of the city? Birmingham. 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 Oh, Birmingham. Yes. Birmingham. Birmingham. Yes. Birmingham. I'm going to be Birmingham. So it looks like okay. a, a, an hour away from London, right? Something like this. Uh, like hours a away. couple of hours away from London. Yeah. Depending on what type of train you take. Yeah. It's yeah. it's not far All away. Right. It's, it's, yeah, it's doable. Okay. That's, yeah. that's not, that's not a bad, uh, that's not a bad deal. Right. So, yeah. So, so, because I'm, I'm going to speak on the Manchester Java group mm -hmm. and then in the Birmingham uh, Java group. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I'm going to be close. Oh, very good. Okay, keep me posted. Keep keep us all yes. posted. Yeah, definitely. Okay. Definitely maybe. would like to. Uh, maybe we could do a session from one of those venues. You never know. We could do a session like that, right? Sure, that's for sure. Oh, Max Max is here, right? So so Baslur is going to be in Cologne in 22 of June. So so Ma so Baslur, if you can extend your trip a little bit and come with me to Munich on the 24. Um, that would be awesome, right? I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna be passing by Cologne in 23, so that would be great. Oh, oh okay. uh, hello, hello. Max. Hey, Max. How are you doing, man? Oh, oh, I'm doing great. So, thanks a lot for talking about my name in this live. So, I'm <laughs> very I'm very shiny by now. <laughs> so th thanks again for for sending me the invite so uh, it's a pleasure to be here thanks for having me a little bit i i know that maybe we are the, we are in a time i think so am i right no we are starting our next one hour <laughs> oh <laughs> no yeah, right. hour. let's do this let's do this i like to talk so, about so open source. we invited you to also let our audience know that you can get onto this session like that just you know, ad hoc. You don't need a prior invitation and screening and all that. We used to have people join in and leave. I think Pedro did that once a long time ago. Uh, and that is exactly how we operate here. You have an interesting thing to contribute. You can be on the show right on the day with no notice. And, you know, just like you are here, Max, uh, to share with us your contributions to the Jakarta project and open source in general. And I know we've been talking on Twitter as well on how we can do some more work with Graal VM and Graal Python on, on our chatbot uh, components. So if someone can find that link of that conversation on Twitter, we can share it with the audience. You can already see Max is involved in those conversations with us as well. So Max is not just doing his Jakarta stuff and other things. He's also involved in the chatbot conversation with us. So more the reason for you to be here. Oh, I, I, yeah, I, I, I learned it uh, through those days. I think 
since I got talking to, to the community, I realized that uh, open source is more than code. You, it's about it's about community. It's about people. And uh, if you want to get start to contribute, why not to get start to talking to the people? I, I think it's a, the best way to get started. So um, if you want to get start to contribute, why not to 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 go through with, with uh, your preferred uh, preferred tool, for example. I, I love uh, Grow VM as well. I love to work with Java. I, will, I love to work with TypeScript. Why not to, to work about, about the, the thing? So why not to, to get started? But as I said before, it's about people. So why not to help people? So uh, many give me opportunity to talk about, oh, Max, could you, could you take a look on this project? Could you give me some more insight about that? And uh, based on that, it gave me opportunity to learn more about, about, about GraalVM. And I learned, oh, looks like there are a specific tool inside of GraalVM. Why not to, to, to learn about that? So why not to share with the community? That, that's the reason why open source is a very incredible way to, to improve your career. So why not to do this? I know that it's more, more than a philosophy thing. Am I right? So, but... But uh, open source is is related to engineering stuff. So, if you want to learn more about how to work with uh, the best developers around the world, why not to get start from from open source? Uh, I'm following Otavio Santana, and uh, I have learned a lot about that. I never thought before that I will become a, a contributor, especially in, in Jakarta world. So it's a proof that it works. If you do, something will, will happen. So if you do not, nothing, nothing will happen. So I, I think uh, Bruno already said that. So we, we need to be able to understand and learn new things. So I, I'm very happy to 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 help to help people around the world about that so <laughs> that's all that i that i want to, to share right here okay <laughs> that's good that's awesome and and one interesting thing that max so max is max is uh, um a privileged one right because he works with fotavio right on his company right so bo they both work in the same company but most of us we don't have the chance to work with, with fotavio or with money or with you know such an amazing uh, people that are out there, right? So participate in open source is a great way uh, for you to do exactly that, right? So, well, and and uh, um, do you think that working with Otavio has helped you uh, become number eleven in in Jakarta this month, or this this quarter? Max, S so, sorry, I, I have, repeat again. My 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 my, my headset is failing a little bit. Could you repeat again? Sorry, yes. Bruno. I'm saying that, uh, uh, you know, do you think that working with Otavio helped you uh, participate better on Jakarta E and become number 11 this, this quarter? <laughs> yeah, well, I, I, uh, we, we, we are friends. I, 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 I'm sure about that. So uh, it helped me a lot because uh, I could ask him um, not not only for only on the project side i could talk to him um from through chat tools and something like that but uh it's very interesting because um sometimes we underestimate ourselves to be to be honest uh we take a look on the project and then we uh, we start to punish ourselves. Oh, I'm not good to do that. I, I, I will give up. But it's the, it's the worst thing I think. So once I once I get start to talking to to Otavio, I, I could realize that oh man, I we, I give it a try. I will try to to get start. And why not to to take a look on the the project in, in order to understand how those things works. It's a new world, man. So why not to, 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 to pay attention with that? So, uh, of course, when we got Otavio as, as mentor in, in a project like that, we will get, uh, how can I say, shortcuts to, 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 to solve those things in the easiest way. But I, I take a look at 
uh, we also you can do this as well. So feel free to reach out to us uh, and uh, to talk more about the project. I will be very happy to to help you to get to get start to contribute. So the diversity give us opportunity to learn more. So why not to to get started about that? So. Um, but but I agree with you, Bruno. When we got good mentors like you, like many, like Pedro, Hugo, Otavio, Elder, so you you reach out your, your goals quickly than you perceived before. So <laughs> I, I think you you must to, to do the first step. I that, that I like to say to, to to my friends. So you must do the first step. If you don't do anything, anything happens. So. It's something I learned with you. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> That's good, man. That's good. Okay, cool. All right. So uh, someone said here, uh, um, oh man, too many messages here in the chat. Uh, Vena, Ven Vanya said, I should go to the BMW museum, right? And get traditional beer, right? Okay, Munich. So Vanya, are you going to be there? Right, so let me know so we can actually uh, meet. You know, I'm gonna looks like I'm gonna meet uh, Money in London and Vanya in Munich, right? And and Baslur in Munich. So that's 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 looks like a great trip. Well, just to just to sp uh, do a little bit of a spoiler there, uh, Bruno. Vanya is mm -hmm. based in Canada, unless she plans to take a trip to Munich around that same oh, time, I don't know. going yeah, to okay. any of the conferences. Then you know you would have the luck of drinking beer in a in your museum in the bmw museum <laughs> yeah that would be good i just want to uh, to, uh, to get a comment here from andres he he ran our our project then our money so he, he said he just said he just shared here that he could start yeah. the the chat I, bot and the bots are talking to each other <laughs> i saw that i saw that yes so um, yeah i was, he was so for the room yeah, I was going to check with Bruno. Uh, Pedro already <laughs> read my mind. I was going to check with Bruno. Uh, Bruno, are you writing the core of Docker containers before you um, could compile so, it and, and get it running? You know, so so the thing is, I recently changed computers and, and Docker is not running for some reason. So that's not a problem with your project. So I'm trying to figure that out here. Yeah. Well, you could always screen share and we could help you tweak that and get it running. If you yeah, like, but, yeah. yeah, but I think we could. Uh, I think uh, first, we are. Uh, first, let me get Docker running. It would here. be difficult to Docker, get Docker running right. now. Yeah, yeah. That's, I understand. That, I let, let's, Docker, let's yeah. Once you get Docker one. running, maybe in the next session you can see yeah. show us show off the whole thing work, working. For sure. So, so yeah. I, yeah, Docker yeah. is the only prime uh, factor here. That that is a dis difference between it working and not working many right. times. So I think uh, we, we, we are reaching our, the end of the session today. And I just want to thank everyone for joining today, especially you uh, that is watching us. And also special thanks for Max. I invited him in, <laughs> in a very passionate way. <laughs> just, <laughs> just, yeah. uh, just sent your link and hey, yeah, come, come on and talk with us. But that was awesome opportunity for us to have you here. It's this session is a topic. It's totally related to what you just did uh, and, and achieved it uh, in Jakarta. So congrats for you once again. And, and yeah, hope to see a lot of, lot of more contributions from everyone that um, is watching us today. Yeah. Great. I, I know that, that uh, it's late, but I'd like to, as we are talking about Jakarta, why not to mention about Jakarta? So it's a yeah. good book. Cool. To talk about that, it's it's a good it's a book ro wrote by Elder Murray, so it's a good oh. one if you want to learn more about Jakarta. Oh. E. Why not to do that? So I just like to share it. Uh, I know that you, it's a how can I say it's a ceremonial thing that you used to do in the end of the session, and yeah. that's yeah. Awesome. Uh, I, I, I separate that <laughs> with me. <laughs> thanks that's again, cool, thanks again. Thanks. <laughs> so that, that's it. So thanks, thanks again for having me and. Uh, it will be a pleasure to talk to anyone about open source contribution, especially in Jakarta. E. So, feel free to talk to me. Talk to me later, and that's it. Thanks again. Thanks again, many. Thanks again, Pedro, Hugo, and Bruno. Uh, awesome session. Thanks to audience, public. So, that's it.
Bye Thanks, bye, guys. Max, for joining Thank us. Thank you. Great Thanks to have you here. Right. Come, come again in our next session and all the other sessions after that. But, but I mean, why, why are you leaving? Let's, let's finish the whole thing. You know, are, are you guys going to talk about the books now or? Yeah. yeah. You, you stay, yeah. stay oh. a little bit longer. We're going to be. Sorry, I thought that Max had something. Yeah, and, and, yes. but, but I must go. Really, I yeah. must go. This, there's yeah. a yeah. I, I was so quickly. Okay, cool. We will, we will share your book. We will share your book contribution uh, along along the other books that we're going to be sharing. So okay, thanks yes. for, for being with cool. us, Max. And thanks for sharing the book with us. Bye. See ya. Bye-bye. Have a good day. Thank you, Max. See you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. See you. Cool. So Let's start the, the next? round of books. Yeah. You go over to you. Okay. Over to me. Okay. I, I will get, I will grab the, uh, the this book, I think. It's more related to the topic today. Uh, let me just stick the, uh, the link here. It is the book from Dale Carnegie. I, I just shared it uh, in a few sessions ago, but I think it, it does make sense, still makes sense on this topic. So I would like to paste the link here. Uh, like, like Max just said, uh, open source is not just about the code, it's about community. So it's a great idea to have good communication skills in this environment. And as, as better as you go, you'll be more, uh, you, you'll receive more invitations to contribute or your PR will be more welcome for, for every project. So this is a good book, not uh, a, a very, uh, how can I say, uh, widely spread no. name. Yeah, very well known book. And yeah, it's, it's some great ideas here that might be helpful for everyone that would be join, joining open source projects. So that's my- I do remember um, briefly reading that book. So I think, um, I think it's quite a, good, quite a good read and it's very different way of approaching this whole concept of personal relationships with others mm -hmm. and communication with others. Yeah. Well, cool. I think Who I can share mine. Next? I think I can yeah, share mine ahead, because it, the, the, in the same in the same path that Hugo said. Because mm -hmm. I wanted to share the seven. The seven is the story of leadership. Uh, a simple story of a sense of leadership, right? So the idea is, oh, we if you wanted to be a leader, we need to be a servant. Like you need to be, uh, you need to help people. You need to mentor people. We need, if you're talking to us, uh, if we're talking to what, what we're talking here about the open source, it's it, it's totally related, right? Because we, you, many, and you go as leaders of an open source open source project. You are the the the, the leaders here, but you are helping people to to bring them and to and to make them learn. So all all this. Uh, all this different way to, to look at leadership is is what is this book is all about. So I think uh, I think it's a good a good uh, uh, complements a, a yeah, complement with what uh, uh, Hugo just shared. I think I think the word that that comes to my mind is servant leader, isn't it? A leader who is serving and, and mm -hmm. leads by serving. So or a servant leader. This which is a terminology exactly. as well in this in this idea. Cool, uh, Hugo. Did you have a link to your book? Uh, it's easy to find them on Amazon. I can quickly uh, find it for you. I just I just share it here uh, on the chat already. Oh, you did already. Oh, perfect. Yeah, great. All right. So I will share mine. Um, sort of related to what we were talking about today. We did touch a little bit about architecture. This is clean architecture from. Uh, Bob Martin, everybody knows him by Bob, but you know the official name on the book is Robert C. Martin. Um, highly recommend reading this book because this complements with his other books, especially the Clean Code book. But this is more about architecture, uh, uh, one or a couple of abstraction levels higher, uh, but fairly important uh, to understand this. And and Bob Martin has is a is a great. Um, writer and, and, and has explained these these kinds of topics very well and clearly. So not fully complement with what Hugo and Pedro has shared, 
but definitely with the topic of the conversation today and what we've been covering, it's something to know about. So hence, I, I wanted to share this with everybody. And I think Bruno went to pick the Bruno book. has no. gone to fetch his link, which is a physical book. <laughs> No, I was I was trying to I was trying to find and, and I thought I didn't have it, but I actually remember where it was. So actually, <laughs> I'm going to be very on on topic here today. Uh, you know, the, uh, this book here is called Open Sources: uh -huh. you know, Voices of the Open Source Revolution. So this book here has a lot of the top open source uh, guys uh, that define what open source is. And it's been, it was released many years ago. Uh, and then what happened was, that was the one I was actually looking for. There's a verse, There's a new version of it, 2.0, right? And that's the continued rev evolution of open sources. And actually, um, I'm, one, I'm, I'm on this book here, right? So I'm one, I wrote one of the chapters of open source 2.0, right? And so that talks about, uh, uh, actually, is the, is the chapter that talks about Java, right? So you know, Java and open source. So uh, if anyone wants to take a look about open source a little bit more and have an opinions. So those two books are great because they complement each other. They're, you know, they're totally, each, each chapter is a different thing, right? So they're totally different, comp very complementary. And so open sources, I recommend both from O'Reilly. And I can't really tell the name of everyone here because it's just a lot of people. <laughs> cool. Cool, really cool. And yeah, today, with today's discussions, uh, just uh, Basil just sent uh, a message here. Uh, he mentioned here, uh, now that everyone talks about AI, very, very relevant, I thought. Uh, I, th I believe that's about open sources, right, Basil? And yeah, I, I can't stop thinking that I, I need to pay something for money after the, all this discussion because I, yeah, I was working on, on, the, on the open source project that he created and that was a room for many, uh, many experiences and learnings. But yeah, money, I think I will stay with a pint when I go to, when, when someday if I go to, to the London <laughs> and I hope it's fine for you. <laughs> yeah, I think, I think that's a good, that's a good offer. Uh, I, I'll replace, I'll, I'll request for something else than a pint, but you know, making that gesture <laughs> is, is, is still uh, valuable and I, I, I respect it and, and thank you for thinking about it. But yeah, you don't have to really um, pay me back with anything. Just share that with somebody else. You know, oh, great. help somebody else yeah, elevate and get that experience. And you can use the project as a launching pad mm. for their experiences and your experiences. And, and you could be the mentor for them because as the project gets more and more developed, there'll be more and more places and reasons and areas to use as a learning tool to help other people grow. Cool. Yeah, seems like Babu shared a, uh, a book here, but I couldn't get it. There were so many comments here. I missed your your book, uh, Basler. If you can share here again, it would be great. So so I can put here to to everyone. Yeah, I can't. I can't get here. But yeah, I think uh, that that's it. I, uh, any last thought for from from you guys? Yeah, there's a lot of mess I can find. Okay, so <laughs> uh, so what I, you know one one thing that you know I think that was relevant for today is that uh, there was a uh, and, and we that's a discussion because Basil mentioned here about a about AI right and so. Uh, there was a discussion around uh, in, internal to Google, right? The, and one of the documents was leaked uh, to the internet, right? Where, you know, just like one person in Google, I'm not sure how many of them are, how many are think like th that way, right? Was very worried about how open source and AI, right? So open source AI, how much that is advancing and how much it's actually leaving uh, Google AI team and uh, the open AI team behind, right? So, you know, that's an interesting document to take a look. Maybe that could be an interesting discussion for next time they're here. But yes, open source and AI, 
are things that are going uh, hand in hand, right? Uh, if, you, if you're interested in open source, you're interested in AI, those are two very interesting things that you should be working on right now. And the, the you know, the, it's, it's a movement that is causing waves. So just, just to, uh, you know, to say the least here. And you can stay relevant in that movement by starting to contribute to this project because it has both the angles of open source and AI in it. If you look closely, it's right under our noses, and it's there to. It's going to be. It's going to be growing in leaps and bounds as time passes. As we keep working on this project more and more. Right. Exactly. Exactly. Great. So thanks everyone. Uh, thanks for joining us. And and yeah, see you guys on the next session. Bye. See you guys. Take See care. Bye-bye.